So this is your stack right now, but you want to increase your skills so you can make some more money and then your money becomes really happy and it starts rotating around like this and then it spreads itself out so you can lay down on it and sleep well at night. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Well, how are we going to do it? Actually, it's quite simple. Uh, we are going to gamble. Yes, I'm going to teach you how to make some poker chips and place it in a random stack. So we're not actually going to gamble, guys. And this is not real money either. So big disappointment for you all. But we're starting over here because this is the skill level right now. And this is the geometry node setup. And we're going to increase the stack as your understanding of this increases. So it's a very simple setup. And we've got our group right over here. Oh, I got the wrong one selected. And you can enter that group and there are some more nodes over here. But it's not very complex as you can see. It's really simple. Either way, this is the entire setup and we are going to recreate this from scratch. Let's go over here. I've got a poker chip and it's right over there. So I'm going to add a plane and I'm going to add a new geometry node setup. By the way, you can go over here into geometry node editor and then you have your geometry node editor. I'm going to disconnect the group input. For now, we do not need a plane and we're not going to need it anyway. So I'm going to press Shift A, Curve, Line. And this curve line, I'm going to enter into the geometry. And now, as you can see, we have a little line right over here spawning. I'm going to increase the C so you can actually see it better. And actually, this has a zero and a one. So there are two points on this line, point A and point B. And in between those points, we want to spawn more points and then on those points, we want to instantiate our poker chips. I'm going to explain every step along the way. Shift A, resample curve. Now the count is on 10. We cannot actually see it, but there are now 10 points on this curve. So it has been resampled to 10 points. That's basically what happened. So now what we need to do is add an instance on points because on those points, we want to have our poker chip. So right now I can go over here and let's see poker chip and it's called poker chip. So I'm going to drag poker chip into the geometry node setup and the geometry can be added into the instance. And what do we have? Well, 10 poker chips, exactly as predicted because we have 10 points on this curve line and on those 10 points, poker chips will be added. So that's basically what that does. And this is actually a big part of the entire setup. Now, what you can do is you can decrease this and Make sure that it all aligns and you can increase it and then increase the sample count. But this is really not the best way to do it. Uh, I've got one over here, so bad poker chips I called it. And you see that even if we have it all randomized, if you increase this line, they kind of spread out. And we do not want that because then you have to do everything manually. Each time you have to increase the count on your resample curve, etc. and fiddle around with it. Now it's intersecting and it's just a recipe for problems. So I'm just going to turn this off, get back into this one. What I'm going to do is explain to you the thought process behind getting this to work. So first of all, we have a height. This is the height of our curve line. That is this height and we can manipulate it like this. Now on this height, I want to spawn my poker chips. And this is a poker chip. So how many times does this poker chip fit into this height? Basically what we need to do is we need to take the height of this poker chip as well. And then we can divide the height of this line, divide it by the height of this line, which is the object height. And the number that comes out of this is the number of poker chips that fit exactly within this height. So this is basically what we need. And then this x will be our count count in the resample curve node. So that's basically what we are going to do. That is the thought process. So we have a height. We are going to determine the height of the poker chip. How many times does uh, this, the height of this poker chip fit into the height of this line? Then we know how much the count should be on our resample curve and everything will work out fine. So let's delete this like so. I hope that is very clear. And now we have our object info. Let me select it. I'm going to bring it right over here. And the object info can be put into a attribute statistic. Now it is removed from our instance on points. So I'm going to drag this line 
and bring it into the instance back again. Now the attribute statistic allows for us to determine the height of this object. So we've placed this geometry into the geometry of the attribute statistic. And now we need to know the attribute. First, we're going to add a position node. Position. And basically what this does, this node kind of determines where the points are of this object. So if we plug the position into the attribute, it will kind of read what our object is actually looking like. So the position, as we can see over here, factor that indicates the location of each element of the geometry, which comes from the Blender documentation. So position, and we can enter this into a separate XYZ into the factor. Now, which axis do we want? The Z axis, because then we can determine the height. I'm going to plug that into the attribute. And now all we need to do is make sure that we add a curve length, curve length, because this can determine the length of our curve. So the curve line can go over here in the curve length. The reason why I use this node is because the divide node or the math node uh, doesn't allow you to enter the geometry from this green socket into the math node itself. So we need to add this in between node in order to get that working. That's basically what it is. Math node, set it to divide. And I do not want a keyframe on that. And the length can go over here. So then we've got our height and we want to divide the height of our curve line by the height of our mesh. So if I plug this in here and enter this into the count, what do we have? It is fitting entirely on this curve. And if we increase the length of this, it will also increase the sample count because of this simple node setup. But it isn't randomized yet, so it kind of looks bad. So we need to fix that. And how can we do that? Simple. We can go over here, set position. And we've got a set position node. And this set position node, we can randomize using a random value. And the random value on this offset uh, we want to have it happen, not on the z-axis, because we don't want them to float around anyway. So we want to have it happen on the x and y-axis. Now, you can make two different node setups for this. I'm just going to keep it simple for now. Uh, first, random value, and I'm going to select the combine xyz, plug it into the x, plug it into the y, and then this should go into the offset. Now, as you can see, it is already offsetting. But let's first uh, do the x, so you can actually see what's happening. So. Here we can see the x-axis is determined like this. Oh, by the way, let me increase this stack because your knowledge is already increasing as well. And then we can see that it's moving around on the x-axis from a point minimum and a point maximum. So if we decrease the maximum or increase the minimum, it moves around like that on the x-axis. Now we also want this to happen on the y-axis. And as you can see, it's also happening on the y-axis. And I'm just going to keep it simple like this. And we also want to rotate everything because look, now this entire line is white, 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 and this is not the way that it is supposed to work. So it's actually way more randomized than this, unless, well, you manually place it like that and people do that. So how can we do this? We can add a rotate instances node. And now we have a node to rotate all of these on their axis, but we don't want to rotate them on the Y axis or the X axis. So what are we going to do? I'm going to copy the random value and the combine XYZ, bring it over here, plug the factor into the rotation. And now it's not in the correct ones because we've got the X and the Y. I'm going to unplug this and place this one into the Z axis. And now as you can see, it only rotates around on the Z axis, which goes like this. And then we can move it around with these sliders. And that's very handy and all. So this is basically already the entire tutorial. This is, this is the setup. This is the setup for this entire tutorial. Now, if you want to have these things in your modifier tab right over here, what you can do is take a group input node, copy it, bring it over here into the min and into the max, then open up this tab by pressing N and you've got your min and max right here. Now, this is the min X uh, or min position X max position. We actually made just one, so I'm just going to call it min position and max position. Then for this group input, I'm going to duplicate it once again, I'm going to place it right over here, plug it over here in this socket and that socket, and the min rot for min rotation, and the max rot for max rotation. 
And now basically you've got the entire setup and you can play around with it right over here and over there and over there. So let's increase our money stack once more. Very good. And if you also want to have the object as a socket, you can do that. You can simply plug it over here and now you have an object socket. And now you can basically select any object you want. So let's say uh, the money. And there you go. You have a money stack like that. And once again, you can increase or decrease the max rotation, minimum rotation, play around with uh, these values. And uh, now it's kind of moving around and you've got your own money stack. All right, so I just found out a problem with the original setup for larger objects. So right over here, we have the C skill and what it does, this cube is two meters and right in between this space, there's two meters. Now I've set this to four, but watch what happens if I place this downwards, it disappears. And that is not what we want to have happen. So there is a slight change that we can make in order to fix this. So it's right over here. You set this to two. And now when you play around with this slider, it actually also works for larger scale objects. So the original setup works fine for like objects like this, but for the larger scale objects, you actually need to add two more nodes. It's not that complex. So right over here, I've added it in a group, but it's the original setup that we started from. So we have the curve line, the curve length, etc. And we divided it to get the height and how many times the object fits into this curve line. So we've got the minimum value of this attribute statistic and this multiply node basically decides how large our object is so in case of this one it is 5.71 meters so if i were to use this cylinder right over here then this object height of 2 will not work watch so if you put this to 5.71 which is the size of our original cylinder as you can see right here then it will work out. So right now you can place it all the way over here. And if you increase it, it still works. You just have to slide it a little bit further in order to get it on the right edge. But that is basically the solution to this problem. So all you have to do is add a multiply node right over here. And I have added this group input, the object height. So I just plugged it right into here so that you get another one of these sliders. And here we plug in the minimum value, multiply the minimum value by the object height. And then we subtract this from the curve length in order to make our curve smaller, basically, before we divide it in this uh, entire setup. Now. If you select this smaller plane that is smaller than one meter, so let me go ahead and do that right over here. Now, if I decrease this and enter the size of this original plane, which is right over here, guess what? Doesn't really work anymore. You have to now fiddle around with the object height and the Z height in order to get things working that is a little bit annoying but still it works and it's faster than doing it all by hand so we select our money stack and increase this by now like so and as you can see there's a bit of a gap in between there so now you can adjust this height in order to get that done so i just want to notify you guys that this is a problem but the fix was simple so a multiply and a subtract and uh, everything should be up and running so that's it for this tutorial i hope you had a very fun time and that you learned a lot I tried to make it as simple as possible. If I didn't, please let me know in the comments and I will try to elaborate on whatever questions you have. And I hope that you can now finally sleep at night. And if you want to become an undeniable force in the 3D space, then I highly recommend watching this video next.